So I recently got the M2 Pro Mac Mini. It's a great little machine. And of course, the first order of business is to install all the apps I like to use on a daily basis. So I thought, why not share that with you guys and take you through my process? So here are the core apps to help me stay productive, organized, and entertained. Let's ramble. Hold up, Thanks, go well when I pull up. They all on me like it once. Hey, what's up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So whenever I get a new Mac, I don't just import everything from my other Mac. Instead, I make use of the opportunity to start with a clean slate. The main advantage of that is that it forces me to reevaluate which apps I really need and actually use, and which apps have just been taking up space and aren't gonna make the cut this time. I'll take you through my list of core apps. Some of them are absolute essentials, almost no brainers. Others might be new to you, and there might even be one or two surprises in there as well. Right, so let's start with the essentials. The very first thing I do after I clear my dock from all the stuff I never use is I open Safari. I do that once for the sole purpose of downloading Google Chrome. <laughs> After that, I will never open Safari again. That's how much I dislike it. I know Chrome can be a ram hog, but it's the most popular web browser on the planet for a reason. It's fast, it's secure, and it's customizable. You can sign in with your Google account to sync your bookmarks, your history, and your settings across devices. And that includes non-Apple devices, which as a tech reviewer is very important to me. Next up is another replacement exercise. Apple Mail gets the boot and is replaced by Microsoft Outlook. Full disclosure, I'm not a fan of Microsoft. I believe Windows is the devil's software, but there are a few Microsoft apps that are just unrivaled. And one of those is Outlook. It's reliable, it's incredibly feature rich. It takes pretty much any email account. The calendar integrates seamlessly with the Apple calendar, et cetera, et cetera. I even started using it on my iPhone again after all the other email apps started flaking out on me. And even even the mobile version has come a very long way. The only gripe I have with Outlook for Mac is that the new version is still super buggy. So much so that I had to revert back to the old legacy version. And that sucks because the new version looks and feels the same as the iOS version. So I'm really looking forward to Microsoft ironing out the kinks so I can switch to the new version on the Mac as well. Another Microsoft Office app that is a must have is Word. It's the best word processor on the market, hands down. I don't think this app needs any further explanation. Everybody knows it. Most offices use it. It's just a rock solid and feature packed word processor. And I've had zero reasons to switch. My PDF editor of choice is UPDF. Now, apart from the fact that this is a super solid product, you can also use it across platforms on Mac, Windows, iOS, and Android with just one license. Of course, you can read and annotate PDFs like you can on any PDF app, but it is much more than that. It has a really powerful editor, which to me personally, is the most important feature. I've tried a lot of editors over the years, and usually it's the editing part where it gets messy and things move when you don't really want them to. UPDF is super clean. You just hover over the text you wanna change and everything stays exactly where it belongs. Of course, it also lets you fill out forms, which is another very important feature, no matter what business you're in. It has a super straightforward, easy interface, just a few clean toolbars, and what you see is what you get. It's really easy to organize pages as well if you need to change the order. And when you're done with the document, you can either save it back as a PDF or export it to pretty much any file type you want, including Microsoft Word. You can install it for free and get the basic functions or get a plan, which is still a lot cheaper than most other PDF editors. Plus, there's a link in the description with a substantial discount. I believe it's like 50% off or something. So definitely check that out. Next, I install Dropbox. I don't like iCloud and both Dropbox and to a lesser extent, Google Drive replace that for me. Dropbox is reliable, it's secure. You can store and access your files from any device. Again, cross-platform, which is crucial for me. And the best part is that you can share files with other people, even if they don't have a Dropbox account. Another productivity app that's a game changer for me is Alfred. It's a little launcher and a productivity tool that lets you search, browse, and you know execute actions really quickly. You can also create custom workflows to automate tasks. I don't really do those. Personally, I use it mostly in addition to Spotlight. It just feels faster and more intuitive than Spotlight. Command, space, and the first letter of an app, and bam, you're in. The other feature I really like using is searching in specific applications. For instance, if I type maps and New York, it will instantly pull up a map of New York. Super efficient, great shortcut. Now this next one is an oldie but goodie, and that is Evernote. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I replaced this app a while ago with Notion because it was starting to feel a bit stale. And Notion was fresh and new, and it had all these customization options. 
But Notion is what I call a productivity trap. And what I mean by that is that I was spending more time trying to build the perfect Notion environment than I was actually, you know, getting real work done. The purpose of being productive is not building the perfect system. It's actually being productive. And that's what I like about Evernote. It has enough features to do most of the things I want to do, but not so many that it becomes overwhelming in itself. And when Evernote recently did a big refresh, I went back to it to check it out and I like what I see. The homepage is customizable, but it's super clean looking, and I love the new to-do list style. The number one feature though, that really makes Evernote shine is being able to email directly into Evernote and turn your emails into actionable to-dos. That's a feature I always missed in Notion. Now, if I really need to focus, especially when I'm writing an article or something, I pull up an app called Paper. Paper is just an incredibly clean looking writing app that reminds me a little bit of the old fashioned typewriters, you know? Now, when I use apps like this, I like to give myself blocks of time where I don't allow any distractions and I commit to working for a set amount of time. To do that, I set my iPhone on focus mode and I run a little app called Focus Keeper, which is basically just a Pomodoro timer. And here, I really wanna shout out our channel partner, CaseQ, for providing me with what has become my absolute favorite case, the CaseQ Magic Stand. This is a MagSafe iPhone case with 48 magnets, so it's incredibly strong. But my favorite part is that the whole MagSafe ring doubles as a stand. So you can prop it up at any time at all sorts of different angles, which makes it perfect for things like the Focus Keeper app. But of course, you can also use it to watch, you know, a quick YouTube video on the go. No more looking for stuff to prop up your iPhone. You will always have a stand right there when you need it. And when you're done, it folds back completely flush with the case. And these cases are also really slim and really durable, so I can highly recommend them. Use the link in the description to get 10% off your purchase. Right, next up is Slack. Now this is the app I use with a number of my clients. If you work in a team, then Slack is a great communication tool. It's a messaging app that's organized into channels, but you can also make video calls, phone calls, share files, links, and of course it integrates with a ton of popular apps like Dropbox and Google Drive. But I think the real power lies in the powerful search feature. There's no need for lots of folders. Search is so intuitive that it will always find you what you need, kind of like Evernote. So if you like to have multiple windows open on your screen, I can really recommend Better Snap Tool. It's a must have app. It's a windows management app that lets you snap windows to the sides or the corners of the screen. There are plenty of alternatives, but I always find myself going back to this one because of how well it works. You can also set up custom snap areas, which is super useful, especially if you always have, you know, one window open in the same place. Next up is not so much a single app, but rather a curated collection of apps, if you will. It's called Set App. It's a subscription service that's about 10 bucks a month, but it gives you access to 200 little apps and there's a lot of great little gems in there. One of my favorites is Bartender. If you have a lot of apps on your Mac, the Bartender is really a lifesaver. It's a menu bar app that lets you hide or rearrange and organize your menu bar items. And you can also set up keyboard shortcuts to access them quickly. I hate clutter on my desktop and in my menu bars. So having all of these apps in my toolbar collected into one collapsible space is a great way to clean up my screen. If you're into video editing, then Final Cut Pro is probably the best app for Mac. It's a professional grade video editing app that's used by filmmakers, but it's also used by amateur video editors like myself. It has a ton of powerful features already built in and you can expand on those infinitely basically by using third party plugins. Of course, Final Cut Pro is owned by Apple, so it's also optimized for the Mac hardware, so it runs super smooth on these machines, and that definitely includes the M2 Pro Mac Mini, which is surprisingly powerful. I'll do a separate video on that, so if you wanna see that, hit subscribe and make sure you don't miss it. Anyway, if you like shooting on your iPhone, for instance, and you use ProRes, it will edit that like butter because it all integrates, it's all Apple owned, you know, so for Apple users, Final Cut Pro is probably the best one. If I wanna record my screen or parts of my screen, like I did for this video, for instance, I use ScreenFlow. The Mac has some built-in screen recording capabilities. You can do some stuff with QuickTime and stuff, but this app is far more powerful. It even comes with its own editor. So technically you could do everything from inside this app. It's not cheap, so it probably only makes sense if you really plan to use it a lot. Now, obviously there needs to be some time to relax too. So I also make sure I download Steam onto my Mac. Steam is an online gaming store that can be used, you know, on all the better Macs, if you will. And that again includes the M2 Pro Mac Mini. It can handle quite a bit. So to install Steam on your Mac, you go to steampower.com and you install the client. Once that's done, you can basically start downloading games. Just make sure that the game is compatible with Mac by looking for a little Apple logo next to it. 
One of my current favorites is Cuphead because it's a quirky little game and I can just jump in at any time and play a quick game. The gameplay is super nice and it looks really stunning. It looks kind of like this old Disney cartoon, you know? All right guys, so there you have it. My list of basics to install on a new Mac. If you enjoyed the video, please get one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.